Tonight, the battle for number one. Appalachian State holds it. James Madison wants it. Both teams squared off last season in the NCAA playoffs. But with 22 seconds left in the game, James Madison would fumble on the Mountaineers' nine-yard line, costing the Dukes a game and a dream of a national championship. Appalachian State won by one point. This season, the fifth-ranked Dukes are taking aim at Appalachian State again, hoping to upset the three-time national champions. Stay tuned. We've got the rematch next. Second down and four. This time it was running back. Bagging into the end zone for the touchdown is Moore. It's only fitting he threw the block that got the first down. And he gets his second rushing touchdown of the year as Appalachian State takes the first quarter lead. They were off last week. Right, and, and that could pay dividends this week. Last week, they corrected mistakes from their game against LSU and Jacksonville, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, then Thursday and Friday. They were already on to uh, the JMU squad. This is two weeks ago, excuse me. So they've been covering JMU for an additional half a week on top of what JMU has been able to prepare for them. Third down and three, they've got to get it near the eight. Three wide receivers bunch the top of your screen. And the throw back across the way is good for the touchdown. Josh Johnson in the back end of the end zone. That's the throw they tell you to never make. Well, Edwards just <laughs> made it, and they've got a chance to go up 14. That's the throw they tell you to never make, especially if you're a right-handed quarterback. Rolling to the left, throwing back across your body. Armonte Edwards is a lefty. It makes it a little bit easier. Great pass. Great job of, of Johnson getting open across the back of that end zone. My, what a difference between this year's game between these two squads and last year's game. Last year, JMU held the ball for over 40 minutes of clock time. This year, it's all Appalachian State. On the ground, in the air, they're doing everything right. They're moving the ball up and down this field, up and down and up and down. It looks like JMU has no answers, defensively or offensively right now. So first and goal, Welton's at it again, spinning into the end zone for the touchdown. And a fully dominant first half by the three-time defending national champions. Looks like it's going to come to an end with a three-touchdown lead. I think this crowd, not the ones that are wearing the just gold, but the ones who are wearing purple are stunned right now. Without a doubt. Darris a perfect 11 for 11. Now make it 12 for 12 on extra point attempts this year. And it is 21 to nothing, Mountaineers. I am. I, I also am stunned. I thought that this game would be up and down the field, rushing the ball. Both teams excelling. Now these are two of the top squads in all of the FCS. You got number one, number five. Number five is looking like they're not even on the, the radar right now. This is, you know, the, the way that JMU's been playing, they, they don't even look like they've they've come out to play tonight at all. They were, they, during pregame, the coaches were jumping around, the players were jumping around. They looked so motivated, so so excited to play. It's almost like they burnt themselves out in the pregame. They had their equipment manager singing the national anthem. The crowd was going crazy. And now they have not converted that to the way they're playing. I think a lot of the credit might be going to the guys in the white jerseys for that. They've kind of taken them out of their game. Very true. And the last play of the first half. Got a lot of leg, but he pulled it to the left. That's pretty much the way things have gone for anybody wearing purple here in this first half. Wow, look at the demeanor, too. JMU just kind of slowly lagging off the side. All of Appalachian State's team sprinted to that to that tunnel to go back in. Let's take it down on the field to Murph. All right, thanks, guys. Uh, Coach, obviously a solid first half. A tough place to play. You guys grabbed the momentum early and seemed to just uh, keep it going. Well, we've played well, and we've had some opportunities that we took advantage of, and 
you know, we're, we're playing pretty good right now. We just can't get satisfied with where we are. A group, you know, they're a good football team. That whole league's good. It's a, it's a challenge to come up here and play well. What do you tell your guys in the locker room so they don't lose focus in that second half? Well, I think you challenge them. I mean, we're, we got a chance to have a pretty good football team, and you got to go finish the game. You can't play uh, 30, 30 minutes of it and say, well, okay, we got a, a good or a great football team. But if we can finish it up, we can play the second half well, then we'll have a chance to be a pretty good football team. Best of luck in the second half. Thanks, Coach. There you heard it, guys. They've won a lot of football games. 30 more minutes left in this one. A good JMU team probably going to refocus when they get back in that locker room. We'll see what happens in the second half. Back upstairs, guys. Well, there's a lot of emotion and a lot of excitement coming into this one. And the three-time defending national champs and their superb quarterback took the air out of this entire place. We'll see if some life gets pumped back into the home team or if the dominance continues in the second half. We have reached the break here in Harrisonburg. 21 to nothing. Appalachian State on top. And back with our halftime festivities in just a moment. Harris has it teed up. Crowd hoping for kind of a new beginning here with the new half. And McGee going to start from his own one-yard line. Down the lane. He's going to go if he gets past. Down the sideline. Just the kicker to beat. And he's in for the touchdown. 99 yards. And he sets a flame here in Virginia. This is absolute bedlam. Just what the doctor ordered to get these fans back into the game. Scotty McGee doing what he does best. Electrifying player. Well blocked right up the middle. And he was gone. He's already brought a punt back. Now he's brought a kickoff back for a touchdown over the first three games. Now all of a sudden, We've got noise in the building again. All of a sudden, there's an electricity. Let's see how that translates into the way the remainder of the game is played as Hillary takes the kick back, trying to match him. But he's not going to be able to do so as he gets stopped out at the 26-yard line. Special teams play for James Madison by Colin Fitzmaurice, a redshirt freshman. Now let's take it down to Murph. Well, guys, coming out of the locker room, I got a chance to talk with Coach Mickey Matthews, and I asked him what I, I knew he expected a better effort in the first. He, he said, you know what, I wasn't uh, upset about our effort, thought we played well, just made a lot of mistakes in the first half. He said, we need a big play to get back in this, and we need field position. I think he just got his big play to get back in this. Thanks to Scotty McGee. Guys? Now we'll see if the defense now feeds on this and whether momentum has taken a turn. So the first opportunity offensively for James Madison here and good field position to start with is they will start from the 38 yard line. That's exactly what he's been doing tonight or hasn't been doing tonight and has now picked it up and look at that one play and Landers keeping the ball himself has this crowd going berserk. He did it all last week against UMass. It's the first time he's done it tonight. You're, no, you know what? He, you're right. The first time he's pulled it out of that back's belly on the option. He's had a couple plays where they direct snapped it out of the shotgun and he just ran it. All the, all throughout the first half, he was giving it to the back, giving it to the back, and we believed that he would eventually pull it out and run it there. He sets the tone for the second half with a long touchdown run, doing exactly what he did last week, like you said. The ball has been in the hand of a guy in a purple jersey for 25 seconds now here in the second half, and all of a sudden, we've got a one-score game. Unbelievable. We thought this one might be wild before it was done. It took its time getting there, but Rodney Landers has this back to a one-score game with all kinds of time to go. If you came back late for second-half action, you will have missed quite a bit in, three, in two minutes and 17 <laughs> seconds. Yeah. Two for three on the year. And he bangs it through to get his team back on the board and stretch the lead back up to 10 points.
Here he comes again, and this time Landers going up top, wide open, touchdown! <laughs> he faked to a wide receiver and threw a touchdown pass to a running back. He faked? Exactly. How about that? Kirby Long, so versatile, just burned them around the end for that big first down. Rodney Landers, same motion, same formation, fakes the handoff, then faked as though he was going to run it himself, pulled back out. Appalachian State didn't know where the ball was, where they even were, and running scot-free was Griff Yancey. It's amazing what 10 minutes of electric football can do to the attitude of a home crowd. We go to the fourth quarter, three-point game. Third down and long. He wants to throw it. Firing downfield, it is picked off. Intercepted by Darius Ramsey, who just became a starter this week. He read the quarterback all the way, closed on the football, and now JMU's got a short field to work with in the Appalachian State 46. I would not want to tackle him. Look at him. I, looking at him in warm-ups without the... The pads on and stuff. I, I thought for sure he was bigger than 220. I asked Mickey Matthews. He said, yeah, he's 220. But you could strike a match on his abs. He takes his shirt off. Everyone's jealous. This guy is put together. So That's not that, that, guy, guy. that guy looks a little <laughs> little overly husky. Maybe a little morbidly obese for a canine. But Rodney Landers is certainly built. Toss to Holloman. Foot race to the corner. And James Madison has taken the lead. Here in the fourth quarter, they have come all the way back. The, the fans, the stadium is shaking and rocking. And that was a well-designed play right there. Big dive and, and pitch it. Appalachian State bit. Standard right on through. The lead is now four for a team that was down 21 points at halftime. Bob disagrees, but it's clearly a penalty. Clearly a penalty. Clearly very costly as well. That puts him down at the 24-yard line with eight and a half minutes left. And Welton coming near side, breaking tackles inside the 20. Still on his feet. Lost the football. He lost the football. James Madison has it. As Griffin comes away with the loose ball. Oh my. What a big defensive stop. Well, does anybody have a feeling of reverse deja vu right here? <laughs> exactly. Last year, JMU driving to win the game, fumbled the ball away inside the 10 yard line with a minute to play, lost the game. Here you see Robert Welton. He, this was a great run, great cutback, missed tackle by Abdul Wahid, and then fighting for extra yardage. The ball ripped out by Jamie Venny, recovered by Garen Griffin. When, when a back is fighting for extra yards, that's when they're most vulnerable to having that ball stripped by an additional defender. Exactly what happened there. Landers knows exactly where it is. And he knows where the end zone is, too. Oh. 2.31 to go. about quickness jeez he snapped that ball at zero and then went zero to 60 in a split second reverse fields Quavian Lewis the defensive end just had no chance at stopping that 87 yard drive and now it's an 11 point game all right, buckle it back up. Here we go. 145 left. Second and goal from the two. And the give through the middle for the touchdown to Welton. With 142 left, two-point conversion coming now on the attempt for Appalachian State. I got to put all my money on Edwards with the ball right now. He's trying to avoid trouble. Trying to get in. He got in. 
The conversion is good. He took off from outside the two-yard line, flew into the end zone, and the issue is still in doubt now with 1.42 left. Well, the thing is, you can't just fade back, fade back, try to run out the time, and if you happen to get tackled, that's it, because if there's a second left, there's a field goal attempt. Right. You're giving up the ball at the spot that you give it up. So if you've committed to running straight back, you're running all the way back to the end zone and taking a safety. Well, right now, Mickey Matthews is saying, you know what? My best player on the field, Rodney Landers, we're going to let him handle this thing. His job We'd rather to... not put the ball in the hands of our, our young backup punter, Andy Smith. His job is to kill 12. Oh, his job is to punt it. Wow. How about that? Wow. The quick kick. And it's perfect. And it comes to a stop and gets down. The time runs out. What a great ball that was. And look, there's purple and gold everywhere down on the field as the fireworks go off overhead. Number five has knocked off number one. Absolutely stunning. Second half for JMU. And a stunning last play. Appalachian State did not expect it. Uh, I did not expect it. We were wondering what they were going to do. How is this going to work? And it's just bad luck. More and more and more bodies out onto that field to celebrate. James Madison has knocked off Appalachian State, beating number one, 35 to 32. <laughs> this is uh, this is what it's all about. This is what college football is all about. It really matters to everyone involved. Winner, win or lose. I mean, the, the 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 outpouring of emotion from these fans tonight really had an impact. You you talk about teams playing away, teams playing home. They say, hey, it's a field goal advantage playing at home. Right now, JMU won by a field goal. I would, I would venture to say with the involvement of this JMU crowd today, maybe it was worth more than a field goal. You know, with all those false start penalties on Appalachian State, particularly in that first half, trying to get accustomed to the level of noise, it's just, uh, you know, you got you to hand it to everyone, all 11 players on each side of the ball for JMU, but also that 12th player. Let's take it down on the field and that wave of bodies at Wine Murph. All right, thank you, guys. I'm with quarterback and, I guess, now punter Rodney Landers. First of all, tell us about that last play. What did Coach say to you guys? Coach just said, get it off. You know, do whatever it takes just to get the punt off. He said, the game's over as soon as I kick it. I asked Coach at halftime what he said to you guys in the locker room. He said, just keep your heads up. What did he really say to you guys in the Hey, He said we need to get our act together. You know, we, we came out early, and, you know, we didn't handle the moment like we needed to. You know, I, I think you can come out and you want to beat a team so bad. And, you know, you just don't execute. And we didn't execute in the first half, but I, I don't know what to say about my team. We came out in the second half. Scotty sparked us, and the crowd was behind us. We got the win. And what about this crowd? Oh, I love them. They're going they're crazy. They stuck with us the whole time. I love them. All right, Rodney, thanks a lot. Congratulations. What a great game. Let's send it back upstairs to Scott. A wild, wild celebration going on down there. Look at that. Just take a look at the total number of bodies on the field and the mass celebration. This has been a long time coming. You got to go all the way back to last November when they came up one point short against Appalachian State and then went on and watched the Mountaineers win a national championship. Tonight they got in a 21 point hole, never quit, and number five beats number one. Let the celebration continue, and I'm sure it will for an awful long time here tonight. 35 32 the final. Back with more.